All righty, welcome everybody. I see you're all getting in here from the waiting room. Hopefully you're all here for crochet 103. We're gonna learn how to do some increases and some decreases on purpose, like we mean to today. Darren is your teacher, he's there on screen. I'm Claire, I'll be hanging out in the chat and answering your questions. Speaking of, if you do have any questions, please pop them in the Zoom chat there. I'll either answer directly via typing or forward them to Darren. And I'll put the handout and the pattern in the chat there as well, in case you need to download them. And also, this class is being recorded, so if you want to go back and watch it again, you can do that tomorrow at michaels.com slash classes or on the Michaels YouTube channel. And with that, I'll let Darren take it away. Okay, welcome to class, everybody. Today, we're going to learn. We have a lot to learn. Um, I'm going to try to teach you as much as I can. Um, we're going to learn um, more than you need to know than to make this. So everything we learn today, you're not going to need to make this cow, but I'm going to try to um, jam in as much information as I can in this hour so that you can be ready to even make other projects. But at the end of class, we're going to review the pattern. Um, so you'll, be, you'll be ready to start this after just a little bit of practice. So it's really, it's really kind of a nice little thing to have. Um, class today, I'm going to be demonstrating with this yarn and this is lion brand yarn bonus bundle um, called hometown and this is available on lionbrand.com or on michaels.com and with that yarn i'm going to be using this um nine millimeter hook by lion brand and that's the appropriate size for the yarn and then for the pattern we're going to be using a different yarn so for the pattern i'm using these two um heartland sequoia and Heartland Dracutorgus. So I'm going to be using two different kinds of yarn today. Um, this is a really good yarn for demonstrating because it's bigger. So that's that's why I'm using two different kinds. So if we want to go ahead and switch the view to the view of my hands, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, okay, there we go. So the first thing I want to show you, we're going to learn um, how to do increases and how to do decreases. It's very important to know. So let's start with single crochet. And I'm gonna do all of these several times and um, then answer questions as needed. So for single crochet, um, let me see, is that? Sorry. Get my glasses on. So for single crochet, um, the first thing you do, we're going to do an increase. So you enter the stitch and you do a single crochet like normal. But then we're going to go in that same stitch one more time. So we're doing two stitches in one stitch. So basically we're taking one stitch and we're turning it into two. So right there, um, you can see we have two stitches in that one. So that one's the increases are actually really easy. So let me show you again quickly. So you just enter just like you're going to do a normal single crochet. So just like normal. And then we're going to go through one more time in the exact same stitch. And we took one stitch turned it into two, and that's how we increase. All right, any questions about the increase? They're pretty simple, okay. Now the decreases do have a few more steps, so we're gonna go over those in a little bit more detail. So for the single crochet, so what we're gonna do, just so you know in advance, we're gonna take these two stitches here and turn these two stitches into one stitch. So we're gonna decrease by one, so, Enter, so you start your single crochet just like normal. And then you go into the next one and bring up a loop. Now I have three loops on my hook and then you yarn over and bring it through all three. I'll do that again. So enter the stitch, bring up a loop. I have two loops. Enter the next stitch, bring up a loop. Now I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, 
and pull that through all three loops. And what we're doing is we're decreasing by one. So we're crocheting two together. Any questions about that one? That one's pretty straightforward. Okay, you wanna see me crochet three together now? Ready for that? I think, Darren, we can probably go back and show both the single crochet increase and decrease. We had some people who were having trouble finding the view of your hands. Okay, all right, so the, so the increase is um, very easy. So we'll show you that one. So we'll take this one stitch right here and I'm gonna turn that one stitch into two. So we're gonna increase. And then I'm gonna go back in that exact same stitch, do another one. So all we're doing is we're working two stitches in one stitch and that increases by one. And um, sometimes if you're working a lace pattern or making a ruffle or something, they might have you do three or four in one stitch for whatever reason. And that's pretty much the same thing. You just keep doing it in the same stitch. Any questions about that? You wanna see it again? Pretty straightforward, this one. I'm gonna go in the same one. So I did an increase. Now for the decrease, we're gonna take these two stitches here and turn these two stitches into one stitch. So we're gonna decrease by one. So this is single crochet. So you enter the stitch, bring up a loop. I have two loops on my hook. Enter the stitch, bring up a loop. Now I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over and then pull it through all three. Do it one more time. Enter the stitch. Oops. Bring up a loop. Enter the stitch. Bring up a loop. I have three loops. Yarn over. Bring it through all three. Okay, any questions? No, doing okay? Okay. We ready to see, you wanna see crochet three together? Crochet three together? Yeah, let's okay, go so ahead here is single, single crochet three together. So it's pretty much the same. Enter the stitch, bring up one, enter the next stitch, bring up another one. So now I have three. Enter the next stitch, bring up another one. I have four. Yarn over, bring it through all on the hook. Do not split your yarn like I just did. So the handout that you have that you were sent in advance has all of the directions to make these stitches. It has a pattern written for you to practice the stitches. And then at the end of it, there is a pattern for you to make a cow. So there's a lot of great information in the handout. It has a page with abbreviations and everything on it. Um, so what do we wanna see next? Are we ready to see move on to double crochet or do we wanna see single anymore? Move on to double. Single's actually pretty straightforward. We get a little more complicated as you go on. Well, okay, so let's do half double. I don't wanna skip half double. So if we're gonna half double to do the increase, it's the same, pretty much basically straightforward. So with a half double, you start with a yarn over and you do your half double Yarn over again and do your half double in the exact same stitch. And so what happens, we do two 
um, stitches in the exact same stitch, making one stitch into two stitches, increasing by one. And again, the pattern may tell you, do three stitches in the next stitch, um, and you just do it the same way. You just continue on however it instructs you. So I'll do it one more time. Pretty straightforward. Any questions about this? Okay, so let's um, progress on and we'll do a decrease. We'll cro we're gonna crochet two together, half double crochet two together. So you yarn over, you start off like normal, enter the stitch, bring up a loop. Okay, and now I have three on my hook. Yarn over, insert in the next one, and then bring up a loop. Now I should have five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you yarn over and you pull it through. Sometimes it's hard to get it through all of them. Um, you wanna try not to pull your loops really tight. They should move freely on your hook. And that way you won't, if you pull them too tight, it's gonna be very hard to pull it through all five loops. All right, so let's do it again. So with half double, we start with a yarn over, we enter the stitch, bring up a loop. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, enter the stitch, bring up a loop. Now I have five. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see how my hook um, it moves easy, it's not tight. So you don't wanna pull your crochet too tight. And then you yarn over. And as you're pulling it through all of those loops, you wanna face the mouth of the crochet hook down and it should slide through pretty, sometimes you have to tease it through a little bit. All right, any questions about that? And all of the instructions for that are inside your handout written out as well, okay? We wanna see crochet half double three together. You ready for that? Any questions, Claire? I think we're good. I was just gonna say that there's, on the first page of the handout is the directions for the in-class exercise, which normally we would be following, but Darren just jumped straight in. So we're a little bit ahead of yeah. what's written there on the handout. Oh, Deb wants to know. Let me start over. That wasn't. Deb wants to know. Let's when crochet you're three. Going in a... Sorry, Darren. <laughs> go ahead. No, ask me. Go ahead. I had to start over because I was lost my place in the stitch. What were we doing? Deb wants to know when you're going in a stitch, is it the same stitch or the next one? For which case? When we're decreasing? It doesn't say, but I'll say let's go over both. Okay, so here, so this is the next stitch. If you look at your stitches, you want to see either you can look at your stitches by looking at the top of the chain right here. And you can see how that kind of looks like your crochet chain. So each one of these counts as a stitch. Or if you look at them from the side, each one of these little holes counts as a stitch right here. And so I'm going to go in the very next one. And we're gonna crochet, um, do a half double and do three together. So I'm gonna yarn over, go through the next one, bring up a loop. Now I have three. And now we're gonna move to the next stitch because we're gonna crochet those together. So I'm gonna go through, bring up, so I have, oh, wait a minute. Well, let me start over, sometimes when I, I'm talking, I'm not actually paying attention to what I'm doing. So we're gonna yarn over, bring up a loop. I have three, yarn over, enter the next stitch, bring up a loop, two, two, three, four, five. And now to do three together, I'm gonna to go into the next stitch. So we'll yarn over, go into the next one, bring up a loop and how many do I have? One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm gonna yarn over and pull that through all seven. And that is half double crochet three together. Okay. How is that for everybody? Any questions about that part? Does that answer the question, Claire, that was asked? I think so. But we've got another one here. When instructions say bring stitches together, does that mean decrease stitches? Yeah, usually it will instruct you to, um, it'll say do a decrease or do, um, when it says you bring them together, Usually it'll say like half double crochet two together or single crochet two together. It really shouldn't be bring two together because it should instruct you on which um, crochet stitch to use to do that. So that that might be another question for the, the pattern writer, you know that. But yeah, bringing stitches together sounds like a decrease, but they need to tell you with which type of crochet stitch you should be using. Anything else? Do we I want to see an increase that, again? I was going to say, I think the together is probably what she means. And yes, it'll usually be abbreviated like, a, you know, the stitch abbreviation, the number of stitches you're decreasing and then TOG for together. Yeah, I kind of wrote it out here so I could show that if that question came up. So double crochet two together would be written like this, DC two together. That should be, or it would be like half double two together or single crochet two together. Okay, does that help? Okay. Yep, that was it. Let me do it. Okay, so I'm gonna do it um, half double increase now. If I don't, then I'm gonna run out of stitches if I keep doing decreases. So just to show the increase, so half double starts with a yarn over. So do my half double, yarn over, and half double in the exact same stitch. Now this is the, you know, this one we're not moving to the next stitch, we're working two stitches in the same stitch. Then we yarn over, and I'm gonna do an increase again here half double crochet and then in the exact same stitch. Okay. So I'm going to do in a couple of increases. Um, as I'm walk, working on these, do you have any, any questions about anything we've covered so far? I'm going to finish up my row then. Turn your work. You can see just because I've been doing all these random increases and decreases, my swatch isn't laying flat anymore. You can kind of see it's making it shaped kind of in an odd way. And that's what you can do with increases and decreases. If you plan it out a little better than what I was just doing randomly, um, it, that's what creates the zigzag and the chevron is by doing increases and decreases. You do decreases here and it pulls it together and you do increases here and that's kind of what opens it up. So that's what you'll see when we actually get to the pattern, but um, it's kind of showing up here anyway, just by randomly doing it. All right, so are we ready to move on to half double or do we want to see anything here again? We've got a good question. What's the abbreviation for increase? For increase. Um, most of the time when you see an increase, it will just say something like, it'll say do two, like right here, it says double crochet two times in the second stitch. So it doesn't use the, always use the word increase. It'll just tell you to like double crochet two times or, um, or it might say here, like it says here, increase row 
So it's just letting you know on that row, you're gonna be doing increases. And then it's, you know, it tells you, and then it says double crochet two times in the second stitch. Um, and that's how it's, in, but on a more advanced pattern, it doesn't always tell you it's the increase row. It'll tell you, it'll just tell you to do, do, do them in the same stitch. That's usually how I find them instructing you. Do you think that's pretty normal, Claire, or how do you see it? Yeah, I would say it's usually depending upon the pattern, right? It'll, it'll say, you know, either increase in the next stitch or work three stitches in the next stitch. It's not as default a abbreviation for increase as there is for decrease. Because if they say increase in the next stitch, they'll have to tell you how many to increase and which stitch to use. And then it's just easier to say double crochet two in the next stitch. Yeah. Really. Or if they That's just say increase in the next stitch, which sometimes they do if they don't specify a number, you, it's always safe to assume just increase by one. And with whatever stitch you've been using, I guess, if yeah. they've been using the same stitch, of course. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's a good question. Um, pattern reading is a whole other art form, like reading a pattern. It's almost sometimes like solving a puzzle. So it's not like reading a, a book. It's sometimes they're written in secret code, I swear. All right, any other questions? Not okay. strictly Let's an increase see. or decrease question, uh, but Shiri wanted to know, can you please explain DC and itch each ST abbreviation for stitch across. What was that? DC and each stitch across. What does that mean? Oh, DC, so that would be double crochet in each stitch across. So you're just gonna work a double crochet in each stitch. So if you have 10 stitches and it says double crochet in each stitch across, you will just be doing a double crochet in all 10, one double crochet in each stitch. So at the end, you'll end up with um, the exact same number of stitches, no increases or decreases. And in your handout, um, there's the common crochet abbreviations and you'll be able to review this at your leisure um, later on. And anytime you have a question, you can um, refer back to this. So uh, there's a lot of great information in here. Okay, anything else? No. So let's do um, a double crochet increase. Get that out of the way since it's easy. Okay, so for double crochet, you start out with a yarn over. And I'm gonna go in the very next stitch. So I'm gonna do my double crochet. And then yarn over, and I'm going to go in the exact same stitch. Okay, so I did a double crochet in that exact same stitch. So two stitches in one stitch increases. Okay, I'll do that again. So yarn over to start my double. I'm gonna go in the next stitch. So you can either look at the stitch at the top and see that kind of V shape, or you can look at the hole on the side. So you go in, you work your, you work your double crochet as normal. Oops. Try not to split your yarn. And then go in the exact same place. You can find it with your finger keep track of where you are and then finish your double crochet. Okay, so I did, I had two stitches. Here are my first two stitches right there. And I did a double crochet in each one. So I took these two stitches and turned them into four. So one, two, three, four. So that's increasing, which is pretty straightforward. Um, let's do a decrease now. So you're gonna start with your yarn over for your double. You're gonna insert the hook and then bring up a loop. Yarn over, 
and bring it through two loops. Okay. And then you're going to yarn over, insert it in the next stitch. Yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over and bring it through all three. And that's how that looks. You do that again, I'll do it slowly for you. So we're gonna yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over and bring up a loop. Yarn over and bring it through two. And at this point, you want to check and see if you have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, insert it into the next one, the next stitch. Whoops. Bring up a loop. You're going to yarn over, bring it through two. Yarn over and bring it through the last three. And that is double crochet two together. Any questions about any of that? You wanna see it again? I think we should definitely see that again. Okay. All right, and the directions for this one are also written out in the handout. So you can always refer back to it when you're practicing. So double crochet starts with a yarn over, a yarn over, enter the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, bring it through two. And like if you were doing a normal double crochet, then you would almost be finished. You would yarn over and bring it through two, but we're not doing it normal. So we're gonna yarn over and enter the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, bring it through two, yarn, o yarn over, and then we're gonna bring it through all three. And you can kind of see here how these two after you practice this, you'll get really good at like reading your stitches. You can see how these two stitches kind of go together to make that one. And then if you look here, you can see here, it almost creates a little bigger hole than normal, but you can see there's two stitches in here. So that was our increase. And here you can see how they kind of slant together and create the decrease. All right, any questions you wanna ask? Any of, anything we've covered so far, do you have questions about? Yes, Gail would like to see the half double crochet decrease once more. The decrease? Yes, HDC two together. So with the half double, we always start with a yarn over. Go through, pull up a loop. Yarn over, you have three loops on your hook and then we're gonna yarn over, insert it into the next one. Have five on the hook, yarn over and pull it through all five. So half double, so don't get this mixed up with double. So yarn over, pull up a loop, bring it up. Yarn over, and then pull it through all. Okay. I'm going to take these out. All right. Anything else? Do you want to see uh, double crochet three together? Because sometimes that does come up. You see that? Yes. Yeah, let's see that. So always with a double, any type of double, you start with a yarn over. So we're gonna yarn over, insert, bring up a loop. You'll have three on the hook. 
yarn over. Wait a minute. I'm thinking about half double now. I'm getting myself mixed up. So yarn over. Bring up a loop, yarn over, and bring it through two. So yarn over, go through, bring up a loop, yarn over, through two, yarn over, go on the third one, bring up a loop, yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over and bring it through all three. time, yarn over, enter the stitch, bring up a loop, the stitch, bring up a loop, Just have one here at the end. Let's do an increase there. Okay, so here's my crazy watch of my increases and decreases. I'm going to turn. So, what do we want to see now? Anything else? What questions do we have? While we're waiting to see if anybody has any questions, I'll give you a time check there. We're about halfway through class, it's about 4.30 here on the East Coast. And I'll give everyone okay. a reminder that the recording will be available starting tomorrow afternoon at michaels.com slash classes or on the Michaels YouTube channel. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna to skip to triple crochet. Okay. So for triple crochet, so you start with a yarn over two. Yarn over two. And I'm going to go in that first stitch. So triple, yarn over two, go in the same stitch, okay, so that's an increase. I did two triple crochets in that first stitch, so I increased by one. I'll show it to you again. So in this next stitch, I'm going to do two stitches and do another increase. Oops, something went wrong there. Wrap it twice. Darren. Don't let your mind wander while you're doing your triple. <laughs> Darren, question for you. I think yes. there's a little bit of lag on the camera, at least on my end. So as you're pulling through, can you say how many loops are on the stitch or how many you're pulling through? Yes. Okay, let's try it again then. Let me take these out.
Okay, so yarn over twice, should be three. We'll go through the stitch, pull up a loop. So one, two, three, four. So you go through two, three on the loop, or three loops on the hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Yarn over twice. So there's three loops on the hook, technically. Go through, bring up a loop, yarn over two, three on the hook, bring through two, yarn over and two on the hook. Okay, and I did those in the same stitch. So that did an increase. Now let's move on to the decrease because we still have a lot to cover. So we start with yarn over twice, insert in the next stitch, yarn over and bring up a loop. So there's four, yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over. And so now I have three, so yarn over and bring it through two. And now I have two loops on my hook. So yarn over twice, because we're going to go into the next stitch. Insert, bring up a loop. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So yarn over, bring through two, one, two, three. Yarn over, bring through two. One, two, three, yarn over, and then bring through all three. See, there's a lot of steps to these decreases. And if you don't do them exactly right, then guess what? Everything will probably still be fine. So um, if you skip a yarn over, if something doesn't go quite as planned, they probably it probably won't make much difference in the grand scheme of things. And then each time you make a project, um, you'll practice and it'll get better and better. So don't let that intimidate you. So yarn over twice. So insert into the next stitch, bring up a loop, you know, four, yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over, I have three on my hook, so yarn over, bring it through two. And now I've almost finished my triple, so I'm going to move on to the next one for my decrease. So I yarn over twice, go through, pull up a loop. Now I have one, two, three, four, five. So you yarn over, pull it through two, yarn over, Pull it through two, yarn over, and pull it through all. And that is the decrease. Okay, it's not so hard really. You just have to get in the rhythm of it. Um, you have to maybe have the directions laid out and read them as you're doing it. Not a bad idea. When I'm teaching, I do that. I have a cheat sheet right next to me so I don't misspeak and say, um, the wrong number. So what do we want to see? Another, we're going to see a double crochet two together or what do we want to see? Well, we're down to about 20 minutes left in class. I think we still have to cover front and back loop, correct? Yep, okay, so let me just finish this row. quickly finishing this row with triples. Oh, a double, we'll throw a double in, why not? All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these with half double just cause it's a little quicker. Okay. 
So when you look at the top of your stitch along the edge, you see these, they look like a kind of a V shape. If you go through here and kind of isolate it, what we're looking at is this shape right here. And each one of these counts as a stitch and you can kind of see how they fit into each other. So it kind of looks like a chain, right? And so that's what we're gonna be looking at when we look at what loop we're gonna do. So I'm gonna do a half double. And if we do this in the front loop, so we're just gonna do it in the front loop as the loop that's closest to you. So that's the front loop. So if I'm gonna do a normal half double, I would do it this way. I would go under both loops. But if it's telling me a front loop, then what you're gonna do is you're just going to, I'm trying to get that out of the way so it's not blocking the view. And you're gonna kind of come up through the middle of those and you're just picking up that front loop. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I made a sample. So yarn over for your half double. See how it's coming up in the middle of those? And that's the front loop. So it's exactly the same as a half double. There's really not much difference or much to learn, except you're, instead of going here, you're coming up through here. And now back loop is another situation that sometimes you'll find yourself in. So you wrap your yarn. And if this is the front loop, then that must be the back loop. So if we're just going in the back loop, instead of coming up in the center like that, we're actually gonna start in the center between those two loops. And we're gonna go through there and just pick up the back loop. So for back loop, go through there. So if you see it say front loop or back loop, do not let that intimidate you. There's the standard way, right like that, picking up both loops. There's front loop. I guess split it, my yarn's getting splitty. And then back loop would be here. So that's back loop. Let me show you what that does for us in our project. So this is um, in the back of the loop and it creates this um, ridge right here. It gives this line. And when you go into the back of the loop, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see that ridge as you're working. And that's gonna be what shows up as you're working. And then the other side, so the back side of that just looks normal. Um, if you were just looking at this side, you wouldn't be able to tell anything had gone, anything else had happened on the front. This side looks normal, but on this side that you're looking at as you're working, you'll see this little ridge show up and that can be used to create texture in your work. And crochet in the front of the loop as you're working on it, it doesn't look any different. But when you turn your work, you're gonna see, wait a minute. Did I label these wrong? I labeled these wrong, sorry. I'm like, is that the right? So crochet in the front of the loop, as you're making it, and as you're looking at it, it doesn't look any different. But then when you turn your work, then you see the edge, all right? So the secret really is these two look exactly the same once they're finished, except they look like this. So here's crochet in the front and the back of the loop. Here's crochet in front of the loop. And then when you turn them both over, they just kind of reverse. And so depending on what you're making and how you want the front and the back to look, that, that'll instruct you to do it different ways. And this one is just standard way crochet under both loops. And both sides of this, you know, look pretty much the same as well. So 
But what we're getting by doing it in the loop, in the half of the loop, in the front of the back, is this little edge. And then depending on if you put it on the front of the loop or on the back of the loop, that depends on the placement of that little edge. Any questions about that? And that can show up in a design. Sometimes when you're making a hat, they'll have you do something like that and that'll create like, a, it looks like a knitted um, ribbing along the edge of a hat sometimes it can be used. Any other questions about that? If you don't have any questions about that, then I'm going to show you another technique, and I have some samples made up here. Get them all laid out. I've got them pinned together with my stitch markers, which I love a stitch marker, and we're going to use those now. I'm going to show you how to use a stitch marker. All right. So if you look at these two samples that I've made, let me raise my camera a little bit. There's two ways, just to make things a little more confusing, um, there are two ways to create the edge. And this is the way we've learned and we've been doing it. And this is the new way. And you can see the old way we've been doing it kind of gives us this like little fluted or ruffled edge. And the new way I'm gonna show you creates a much straighter edge. However, the new way does create these kind of larger holes. So sometimes you, you may wanna choose one way or sometimes you may wanna choose the other way. And sometimes the pattern will tell you what to do. All right, so let me show you the standard way first because that's what we're comfortable with. And then I can contrast that. Okay, so the standard way, finish my row. Okay, and then I'm doing half double. So I'll chain up, turn. And the next stitch is right here. That's the next stitch, right? And so that's where we're used to going in. And we're gonna go in each stitch across, just like normal. So there's nothing new here, really. I just wanna show you how it ends because the next one is gonna end differently. So there's my last stitch, go through there, we chain two for our half double, turn, and then my next stitch is right here. It's just the very first stitch, it's the next one. So you yarn over and, and go right in there. So this new way of doing it, which will create a straighter edge right here, this one has a much straighter edge. Get my chain going, so half double. So I'm gonna chain, let's do double. So I'm gonna chain, let's, we'll do a half double. So we'll chain two for my half double. And now this is very important. Um, the loop on my hook does not count, but I'm gonna put a stitch marker on my chain, on my second chain. So there's one chain and there's two. So chain two, turn your work, got my stitch marker helping me. And with this one, you skip the first one. So I'm gonna skip that one. Just gonna skip right over it. And I'm gonna go into the second one. And I'm gonna do my half doubles all the way across. Now you might be asking yourself, am I gonna lose a stitch? Like why, how can we do that and not lose a stitch? And I should have got a stitch marker in this one, but you can see here, this is my chain from my other one. So I finished my row, I chained up. And what I'm gonna do is, let me show you how that looked. Okay, so here is my last stitch and then here is my chain up for the side. So I'm gonna do the last stitch like normal. That's when we would normally go ahead and chain up and turn our work. But now for this new way, I'm going to enter that chain. So I'm adding an extra stitch. 
I'm going to chain two. I'm going to put my stitch marker. So chain two, one, two. <clears throat> the one on my loop on my hook does not count. So I'm going to put a stitch marker there. Turn my work. I'm going to skip the first one, but remember, we're skipping that first one, but then we're going to add an extra stitch at the end in the chain. So we're going to remain with the same number of stitches. So skipping the first one, I'm going to go across. So there's my last stitch. I'm going to go in my last proper stitch. This is normally where we'd be done. We turn our work, but um, we have to add our extra stitch. And so you kind of pull that chain that out to find that chain. And you do want it to go under both. So that's going to help keep track of your chain. You go under there. Oh, wait a minute. So you have to yarn over first. And go under that chain. The stitch marker is guiding you. So I finished my stitch. I'm going to chain two for my half double. Then you take this stitch marker out because it's done its job. And I'm going to put it here on that chain. Turn my work, yarn over. And now normally we'd go in the very first stitch, but remember we're doing this new way. So we skip the first one. Work all the way across, whatever. This is the same if you're doing single, double, half, double, or triple. You just go all the way across doing whatever stitches you're supposed to be doing. That's my last stitch. There's my stitch marker. Let's guide you way to go. Chain two from my half double edge. Move the stitch marker up, put it in that chain, turn your work and you're ready to keep going. And as you can see, that gives a much straighter edge than this one, which gives a more fluted edge, but you create these kind of bigger holes where here you don't kind of have those bigger holes as much. Now, Sometimes the pattern will tell you what to do. It'll say, um, the pattern will read chain two. Um, chain two counts as your first half double crochet. Work one half double crochet in check in second chain from the hook and, and each chain across um, or in each stitch across um, and then ending with one half double crochet in the turning chain. And then it'll say chain two, turn your work and it'll instruct you to continue. It will not tell you to put a stitch marker, um, but the stitch markers are very, they make it very easy to where the chain is. Because if we take the stitch marker out, sometimes it's even hard to tell, like, okay, so look, there's my last stitch. That's my last, or is that, that's my last stitch, but what is, well, maybe that's my last stitch. I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell, especially when you're learning, but if you put that stitch marker there, then you're always 100% sure where your last stitch was and where your turning chain starts. And then that'll guide you every time. Um, and this, when you're learning this new way, if you want to try this new way, I strongly recommend that you count your stitches at the end of each row and make sure you remain with the same stitch count as you practice. When I was first learning crochet, I would only ever crochet in the round because I did not want to have to deal with the edges and I kept losing stitches and adding stitches and my pieces would be shaped really weird. 
and I was afraid to do stitches or pieces like a scarf or a baby blanket. It took me a long time to get comfortable. So um, pick one way and kind of focus on that way for a while. And then maybe you want to practice the more advanced way than after. Um, it's up to you. Any questions about those? I was going to say, Jill agrees with you on stitch markers. They are essential for doing the row this way. Yeah, so maybe I, so if, yeah, if this counts, I'm reading the comments. Sometimes I can see the comments. If this, if it says that this counts as a stitch, it'll tell you to chain two. Um, chain two counts as a stitch, as a, as a half double. Then you will skip the first stitch and start with the second one, because this one, is really secretly trying to be that stitch. So yeah, if the pattern reads, um, chain two, chain two counts as your first half double, then you'll skip this stitch and you'll move on to the second one, go across and then put your last one in the turning chain because that way your stitch count will stay the same. Yeah, because I was reading the comments, it looked like. Any question? Any other questions? Do we quickly want to look at the pattern? So here's our handout. This is what what we have. Um, this is um, this class exercise was originally written for a two and a half hour long class that was taught in person. So that's why I didn't start with us doing this because there's no way we would get through it, and I couldn't come around and help you in an hour. So I taught you all of the stitches that are involved. And so what I recommend you doing is um, you can start with this class exercise and practice this one. After you get comfortable with the class exercise, then you're ready to start this pattern. But I've taught you every stitch that's involved in the class exercise. So everything we covered today, you can practice in the class exercise. Um, however, in this pattern, you don't really need all of those things. So you don't really quite use everything in the pattern. All right. So in this pattern, um, I'm going to be using this J10, which is a six millimeter hook. It's a wooden one by Lion Brand, and they make metal ones or plastic ones, you know, whatever you like. And then this pattern is calling for um, the Heartland yarn. Whenever you're buying yarn, you do want to look on the back and see what size hook it's recommending. Um, you want to try to use the one if possible. Um, this one is calling for a six millimeter and that's what I have. Um, if you have to go up or down one hook size, uh, it's not going to be a problem. It should be fine. You know, see how it works out for you. Okay. And this is a free pattern. If you didn't get a copy of this for your class, it is a free pattern. Um, you can download it from um, lionbrand.com and it's called the Crochet Level 3 Rippled Cow. So you can print that one anytime for free. Um, it's giving you a chart. We didn't cover charts today, but um, these charts are another way of reading a crochet pattern. I don't know if it's showing up. Um, that's for a different lesson. That's for a different class. But it also gives you the key what each one of those symbols means. So if you want to maybe try to follow along the chart, you can read the written directions and then look at the chart. So there's always something new to learn. So that's the good news about crochet or knitting. You can always learn something new. All right, so let's just kind of go through the beginning of it um, with A. So you're using two separate colors. Uh, you're going to chain 39, so that's pretty easy. We can do that. And row number one, double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So the three skipped chains count as the first double crochet. So we talked about what that's going to mean to us, right? Um, double crochet in the next three chains. And then there's a comma. And then whenever anything's in parentheses, that usually means it's going to be important. So double crochet, two together. Know, let me move my camera down so it's closer up. Okay. You see that? Double crochet two together twice. So you're going to double crochet two together. 
Then you're going to move to the next two stitches and double crochet two together. Now, can you guys see that? It looks good on my phone, but when I look at it on my computer screen, it looks really bad. Yeah, it's really blurry. I think maybe uh, your internet connection has not been the greatest, unfortunately. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about that. Well, um, okay, so let me look back here. Oh, I lost my place. Um, so you just keep following along the instructions one at a time. One thing you can do also to help keep your place in the pattern, sometimes it's kind of hard to keep your place where you're going to be reading, is if you use a post-it note like this to kind of keep track of where you are. Um, and so what it was telling us to do was double crochet twice, um, double crochet in the next three chains, two double crochet in each of the next two chains. So we're increasing there. Double crochet in the next three chains. We have parentheses again, um, double crochet two together twice. Double crochet in the next three chains and then repeat from the asterisk. So you're gonna keep repeating that to the last chain and you're gonna do two double crochet in the last chain. Now I know that especially with me reading it out loud, that sounds really confusing and it sounds like a lot. But one thing I will do sometimes with a pattern is you can kind of break it up. So double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook, that's pretty easy. So sometimes I'll like underline certain sections so that I know that's one thing, that's another part, kind of put a break. And then when you're looking at it, you can kind of, use your post-it note to kind of keep your eye in the right place and kind of block out everything else that you don't really need to see. And then it's a lot easier to kind of keep your eye kind of right on the spot you're looking for. All right, I think we're almost out of time. I'm sorry we didn't, any, are there any questions about anything we've covered? Anything quickly? It's a lot of information in this class. So as you're practicing, as you're practicing at home, if you do run into questions, which you probably will, you can contact me on Instagram or on TikTok or on Facebook even. Um, on Facebook, it's just my name spelled out, but on Instagram and TikTok, you can find me. My um, name is Mr. Wooly Bear. It's M-I-S-T-E-R spelled out and then Wooly Bear. Um, so if you do have any questions or need any additional help, uh, feel free to contact me. Let me know what questions you have. I can usually um, get back to people pretty quick. Sometimes I'll direct you to another video on YouTube. Um, sometimes I can answer the question so we can kind of go back and forth and kind of sort it out together. So, um, so just let me know if you do need any other help. All right. So we're going to start a knitting series next week. So that'll be exciting. So if you want to learn to knit, we're going to start knitting right from the very beginning and move through. We have four classes for knitting. All right. Anything else? Just I want to remind everybody yeah. that the recording for this class will be available tomorrow at michaels.com slash classes or on the Michaels YouTube channel. And hopefully we see some of you in our upcoming classes. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye.